morning, good morning. It is that time again when we would just sit around the Word of God and uh, just listen to the devotion this morning that God has sent along our way. Thank you so much for waking up with us and allowing the Word of God to minister to your hearts. For the believer, we are speaking about your gift, the spiritual gifts that God has given you. Uh, before we get into that this morning, I want to remind you of the fifth stanza of the song, Little Time by John R. Rice. Notice what he said. The day of pleasure are a feast of friendship, a house, a car, our garments, fear, our fame will all be trash when souls are brought to heaven and then how sad to face the slacker's blame. Today we reap our miss or golden harvest. Today has given us lost souls to win. Oh, then to save some dear one from the burning. Today we'll go to bring some sinner in. Remember that. We are here to share the gospel with others. So when you come in contact with a friend or a family member this day, just share the love of Christ with such an individual. Last morning, we answered the question, why spiritual gifts are given? We shared that they are given to us, they are not ours to keep, but they are given to us to manage. These gifts belong to the Lord. He gives them to us to manage. And I said to you that we can either manage them good or manage them bad. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul wrote to the believers and he said, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. In other words, I want you to be aware of all the Bible says about spiritual gifts and their use. Now, there are those who are properly managing their gifts today, while there are those who may not be properly managing their gifts. There's a perfect illustration in Matthew 25, reading from verse 14, that we will get a clear picture of those who manage the gift well are those who are not managing the gifts well. So in verse 14 of Matthew 25, the Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called for his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. This here could refer to as his gifts. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. Notice carefully. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and he traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged into the earth, and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of the servants cometh and reckoneth with them. So he that had received five talents came and he brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou didst deliver unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art and hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. So, lo, thou hast, that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, 
thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gathered where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he had. And cast ye unprofitable servant into outer darkness, they shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Notice a perfect illustration saying to you that these gifts that God has given to us, he has given them to us to be used for the honor and glory of God and for the benefit of the body, the believers. Oh, I trust that you are using your gifts that God has given to you. You One may say, but why did he give one five? Why did he give one two? Why did he give one one? He says, the reason why he gave them, he says, he gave according to his several ability and straightway he took his journey. In other words, the ability that one has would determine the gifts that he would give. If you are able to handle one, he would give you one. If you are able to handle five, he will give you five. But notice, the one who he gave five, use his well and got five others. The one who he gave two, use it well and he got 100% also. But the one who he gave one, all he had to do is use it well and uh, he too would have had 100% with two. But he decided not to do that. My question to you this morning, what are you doing with the spiritual gifts that God has given you? May I say to you that if unity is to be maintained, then the ministry of the gift is absolutely necessary. Yes, if unity will be maintained in the body of believers, the gift is absolutely necessary. No gift or ability, spiritual or otherwise, is of any value if it is not used. It is serious and tragic that a believer needs to stop and think of the heart caused by stored spiritual gifts. Gifts that are not used to unite the body would cause pain in the body. What are your gifts? Are you using them for the Lord to unite the body of Christ? The gifts are given to serve the one who gave them. That's to serve God. The ministry of all believers is the same as the ministry of Jesus Christ, who is our perfect example. What was the ministry of Christ? Let me just share this with you and stop for this morning. In Mark Gospel chapter 10 and in verse 45, there's a verse they want to bring to your attention and then another verse in John 17, 4. Verse 45, he says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. In other words, the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ did not come, oh God, for others to serve him, but he came to serve and to be a ransom for many. So in John 17, when he was leaving, in verse 4 he said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work thou givest me to do. Verse 5 he says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Brothers and sisters, whatever we do in life, Let's do it to the glory of God and not for self to be seen. Father, thank you 
Thank you for your precious word. Thank you for these gifts that you have given to us. As we share from your word, may many of your children, Lord, who are not using their gifts, become very busy in using their gifts. Oh God, for your work. Have your way. May we minister one to another. May we take on the example of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, you gifted brother and sister, just go on out and take that gift and serve the Lord. God bless you. Love you. Have a great day.